Hello and welcome to this webinar. Today I'm joined by Alexander, who is here to talk about dynamite jobs. Why is that important? Well, as you know, the world is all closed down. You can't find people to run in the office right now, most places in the world. And fundamentally, the world has been moving remote. Dynamite Jobs is specialized in helping companies, particularly online businesses, in actually finding high quality remote staff all over the world, right? So they're not just focused on one location, but they're basically looking all over the world and their platform is targeting, find lots of job applicants who both people with experience, but also people without online experience uh, who can come and do an amazing job. So I wanted to talk with Alex today. He's, he's looking after the Dynamite Job platform. And I really wanted to go through with him today how it can help business owners, right? I personally have lots of clients that have used Dynamite Jobs and I love the simplicity and I love the, the way it works, right? So Alex, first of all, welcome to the webinar. Thanks, Mads. Thanks for having me. Excellent. Alex, do you want to give the audience sort of the two to three minutes breakdown of who's Alex and how did he end up in this mess? My background is not as, as exciting as what's happening right now in the world. Um, but yeah, I got into remote work uh, through, um, I was working as a, a how would you say, doing biz dev, sales work, a lot of commission only stuff, a um, little bit of online marketing um, and had a few clients. And around 2017, I had one full-time client and this was during blockchain and, and, uh, and cryptocurrencies were, were big at the time. And so I, uh, that's, that's how really I got my, my, my intro to, to remote work. Uh, there was a lot of, there was a lot of money flowing around that. So that kept me in there. Um, and that started to end towards, uh, in 2018 and I was looking for something different, something more interesting. Um, and I found out of my jobs and, um, the, the, uh, the, the, the dynamite circle hired me and been helping run that since 2018 now. Excellent. Excellent. And do you want to tell us a little bit about like who, who's the platform aimed at? Like who, who's the ideal clients for you guys? Yeah, the interesting thing about job boards is you're looking at two people, you're looking at two groups, the candidates and the, and the company. So you got to figure out how to market to them differently. Um, for, for companies, these are companies, uh, all of our brands, all the Dynamite brands, all about, it's about bootstrapping, uh, bootstrap founders. And specifically with, with Dynamite Jobs, we help uh, smaller, mid-sized companies that are looking for entrepreneurial-minded talent. Um, we, you and I can talk about specifics of hiring uh, later on, but I think one of the, the main things for, uh, for, for, for our clients is when they come to us with a job description, usually they don't, they come to us, they don't even have a job description. It's, I need a little bit of this, I need a little bit of that. There, there are the rules that are specific. I need a Google AdWords expert, Facebook ads expert, something that is a, um, is a specific skill. A developer is a good example. But many of the, our clients, they, they need someone who's not a jack of all trades, uh, has some negative connotations, but someone who can come in, understand what's going on uh, with they need a candidate who can come in and understand what's going on with their company, work closely with upper management, the founders, um, and just really uh, make, make a name for themselves in the company. So um, these are a lot of hybrid roles that we help hire for. And those are, those are exciting uh, for me uh, to help hire for apprenticeship style roles. That's how I, I got involved with, with this is, is through one of those roles. So in summary, we help um, boots, uh, bootstrapping companies connect with entre entrepreneurial minded talent. Yeah, that's excellent. And um, again, Alex, like what, what are the criteria? Like what does it take to go into the platform? So if, if there's business owners out there who is looking to hire remote staff, what, what's really the requirement? Like what, what do you need to get started? Yeah, uh, we're very proud of, of this actually. It's, um, there's a barrier to, to get involved. I mean, we make it easy in the sense we're the only job board with customer service. You can call us, you can email us. We'll actually respond and that's, that's rare. Um, so we make it easy in that sense to let you know how to, how to work with us. But we don't post every job. Um, every job must be 100% remote, open, and paid. Um, and so when companies approach us, we really want to know, we just want to, first thing we want to see is show us the job description, who, who, who are you looking for? And from there, that's how we'll help, whether we'll, we'll look for red flags for things. Well, this, I'm going in a different direction. Let me, let me pause that actually. We're, we're looking for, for, for jobs that are 100% remote, open and paid, uh, of course, but we're also to make sure that 
uh, our clients that are coming to us, the companies, have really good job descriptions. Um, because when I think, uh, I mean, you go on, I don't want to knock on Indeed or, or Monster, but big, big platforms, those, are, those poor guys are going to be, be get made fun of it when we're talking about niche job boards. Um, but you'll see a lot of roles that are just a paragraph on this is what our company does, and this is what you're going to do, like a bunch of few bullet points. And I thought that's fine, but I think companies forget that you're also competing with all the other companies. Like, now is the best time to hire uh, in, in, in recent history, <laughs> at least as long as I've been involved. Um, there's, there's so much, our traffic has increased 50% in terms of uh, candidates, but companies are still competing with each other to find the best talent. Um, and now more people, more companies are coming in higher remotely. It's very fluid for candidates to switch uh, positions. Um, and as companies adapt to remote work, it's very easy to, hiring and training is still complicated, but it's very easy for people to switch. So when a company approaches us, we want to make sure that their, their job description looks great. Just like as when a candidate applies, we want to make sure their resumes look great. Excellent. Yeah. And, and I mean, the, the way I always talk to my clients about recruitment, right, is a lot of people look at recruitment and they look at it as fulfillment. Whereas when I look at recruitment, I look at it as sales. I look at it as a, as a sales funnel, right? Like you're not, you're not trying to make your job sound easy, but you're trying to sell it to as many people as you possibly can. So just in sales, it's about getting a ton of applications in, making a, making a ton of the right people interested so that you can filter down and basically get out the best candidates, right? So that makes total Agreed. sense. That makes total sense. So how many people are successful? Like obviously the, the clients I work with have been very happy, but, but if you look at the overall jobs, like how many people post a job and how many actually get the job fulfilled? Great question. Um, yeah, of course, all, all of our, everything that we discuss is going to have variables involved, different <laughs> why sure. things are, are going to work out. Um, so let me, let me, how do, how do we phrase that then? I think, um, if you come to us, if you're only posting in Dynamite Jobs, um, what we're seeing right now is there's there's a 50% chance it's going to be fulfilled. Um, and these are the, um, I guess, the caveats involved. Um, I, mean, I haven't looked at these numbers in a little while, um, but like, I mean, let me make sure these are right. About 30% of the jobs that come to us end up being canceled. Um, the other, uh, like, I guess, 20 or so percent, uh, about that 20, 30%, they get filled somewhere else. And then the rest is filled on our site. Um, and so, but if you're only filling with us and you don't cancel your job, there's a 50 to 60% chance uh, it's, it's going to be filled. The reasons that it doesn't get filled, I think, is you, you know, that's one of the things that we try to look for is when people come to us is we want to make sure you're ready to hire. Um, we're working with a lot of founders who they're early in their, 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 they maybe have one or two team members, maybe they have five or 10 team members. Um, but usually they've hired a few people. They, they know how to hire. They know what they're looking for. So I don't ever want to tell someone how to hire. I, I, I've, made, I've made plenty of mistakes hiring. <laughs> you know, I, I've hired people for, the, for, for, for Dynamite Jobs and they did not work out. So I'm not the best person to ask for, for hiring advice. But I can see when someone, is, when, when someone is or is not ready to hire. And that's one of the biggest things you look for is people, when they realize they don't, they don't understand how long it takes to hire, if they understand the, the amount that comes, the, the, the work that's involved, whether that's, oh, you got 30 applicants, not hard to go through. You might get 200, 300 applicants, depending on, on your role. That's a lot of time to go through. Um, they didn't get all the stakeholders involved. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going a different direction in terms of why jobs are canceled. Uh, your question was, uh, what are we seeing in terms of fulfillment? I think that's, that's just it, is we, when someone comes to us, we can, we can predict. Uh, uh, we put them in a different camp and say, you know, this just job is going to be filled. Or I'm actually not sure they're ready to hire, but we're going to help them as best as they can um, to, make, to make sure they're, uh, they're hired. And I think we, like, uh, people who are working with recruiters or, um, or, or, or lower management level is helping hire. We want to yeah. work with them and say, are you, sh are you sure that everyone is on board for this? Are you sure? Because regularly we see like, oh, no, the position has been changed. Like, that's great. Don't hire for the wrong position. Change it. Or we need to wait. Uh, everything is shifting. Um, so those are the things we look for in terms, of, in terms of fulfillment. And we do try to make it clear whether or not we – we have a database of candidates. We know who's our, who's in our system. Right now we have 10,000 resumes and traffic coming in and out, which aren't being gathered in a database. So we're pretty much aware of, of the kind of talent we have and we can help predict um, which roles are going to be fulfilled or not. Um, some of them are very technical positions. Um, we're improving this though, so I don't want to pigeonhole us. We're still having trouble with some kinds of development roles. However, we have filled um, everything from uh, general WordPress development to Angular React developers with five years of experience or 
not five years, three years. So I don't know how long those programming languages have been around, so I don't want to say that, but around those kinds, at least in programming, they, they've been programming um, uh, three to five years. So we are f filling those roles, but I, I wouldn't say, I, sometimes I'll, if someone say, I need a, uh, an, an expert Ruby on Rails developer, I'll say, all right, let's, let's post this but we're not exactly sure who, who we're going to have and we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. use extra work extra hard to target that database. But I don't want to pigeonhole us because we have filled those roles. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. And I think, I think that's, again, as a job board, you need to know what your strengths are and so on. And, and that's definitely, yeah, there's, there's definitely companies who just specialize in developers, right? And that they're, they're often not that easy to find. Maybe, maybe the current crisis will change that a little bit, but, but let's see. Okay, so what 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 does it take, or what does it cost? So for, for companies who who want to go and recruit and dynamite jobs, like what what's the total cost for them to go and find a person? Yeah, um, and when you when you share this uh, this uh, this video with everyone, make sure you put this first. Uh, is uh, first you can post your first job for free with us right now, and okay. where we want as many people to try that out. Um, uh, so post your first job for free, but there are three options, paid options beyond that, because we we want people to try out our service to get to know because we're still relatively new. Um, uh, we are gaining a lot of traction, um, which is good, but we want we want to gain trust through just, just try us out, no risk, no cost. Um, so to post a job, just a, a normal feature listing for 30 days on the site is nine nine dollars, um, and that's a, break, uh, a typical job board. Um, in fact, just bring your video back up. There you are. Um, so post post a listing. We'll promote it to our audience. Uh, we target the the candidates in our database based on location and skills you're looking for. Um, we uh, I suppose other job boards. Well, I don't want to I don't want to get into that because um, most job boards they'll let you just submit your job uh, um, through through the through their platform and then they'll review it and then just post it. We we don't let you submit it yet. We'll we'll we'll, we'll check everything first. Um, that's why we, we offer the first listing for free because we don't want to charge you if, if the job if, if uh, the job doesn't work. Um, so we'll we'll check everything and then we'll we'll post it um, within 12 to 24 hours um, business business hours that is um, and then we'll promote it to our audience. The other thing we offer, which I'm really proud of, is our um, our premium access, which is $149. So for the extra 50, we'll set up your your application tracking. Um, we use Airtable, um, which anyone can replicate this. Which we don't make it. We could build our own uh, software, which is fine, but we want to make it simple and easy to use for anyone. And also, if people don't want to, they ah, I don't want to spend that 50 extra bucks again. That's great. Like, you can set up on your own. You've we've given you the resources, the template, and everything. So with the uh, premium access. We'll set up your um, your application process, the form, and gather them all into an, an a simple spreadsheet to to easily um, review. And if you have if you're not familiar with, with Airtable, it's definitely worth checking out. It's it's free for people to use. Um, at least the the free option. Um, I prefer it as opposed to uh, Google um, Sheets for, for reviewing candidates. Um, that's a whole other conversation. Uh, but it, uh, it it's more similar to uh, if you used recruitment software like Breezy or or Jazz HR, you can more more closely mimic what they've created but not for that price, which is good. Okay, excellent. And uh, yeah, okay. So it sounds like it's it's very, very easy for people to get started, right? So they can get started with the first job for free. And the, well, the other th option is we do offer full service recruitment, um, but the, the, that's, uh, we, we just charge the um, percentage of the first year's salary. Um, so there's no price on that, but there's also, it's no up, up front, but that's, that's an extra option, but we're mostly just promoting the, Feature listing, uh, posted for free, and then premium listing um, with the with the uh, application tracking support. Excellent, excellent. And um, yeah, so one thing I, I forgot to ask earlier, I guess, what what about salary range? Like, do you ever have people who come in and offer a have a salary expectation that's way too low compared to? finding what they're looking for. Um, because I think like, obviously I run an outsourcing company in the Philippines as well. And, you know, sometimes there's people coming with very interesting expectations. Um, do you ever have that? All the time. Um, I don't think as much anymore. There's, I, I, you have a lot of experience with this, obviously. I, I think there's a lot of um, maybe misinformation going on and a lot of it's like the, the land of milk and honey outsourcing. It's like you can get everything you want for for pennies, um, and that's that's a, an attractive thing to say, and that 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 kind of news and those blog posts spread uh, very easily. But that's not always uh, the reality. Um, so we get that. I guess if you want to discuss how we how we handle that, um, 
So we've, we've gathered lots and lots of applications and we, we see salary ranges. So we can give you an idea depending on what this is. That's, that's, this, the first question is, can you help me? Second question is, well, how much is it going to cost? Um, and, that, and that's what we try to, we, we try to give the direction. So when people come in with, with uh, the wrong salary expectations, we try to give them a more accurate range for what people have previously hired for. We'll say give it, sometimes we'll say give it a shot, see, see what happens. But, but with that, we can also say, you're going to miss this. You're, you're, they're not going to be located in this. They're not going to be in the location you're not, you're, you want. They probably won't have this experience. They may not have the level of English you're looking for. So there's all those, all the, all those, those caveats. There's, there's those, um, you can get what you want, but you get what you pay for. Um, so when you're hiring, sometimes we try to make it less like, like a game of just see what you get, you know, in, in yeah. more of, we try not science, but here's what we've known for doing. We've known for doing this for for three years now. Diamond has been around for three years. Let's try to get you um, what you want. Um, and also, I think when someone's like, I can only afford this. Uh, this we just try to understand. Well, like why? What's the most important thing in in your business right now? And and sometimes people will change depending on what their needs. You, they'll realize like, you know, actually, I I shouldn't have you hiring for that right now. You know, I should be focusing on, on something else or. Um, we try to at least let them open up a different range, say, try to give, because if you pay a little more, you're going to get a little extra, which should give you the ROI in return to help you grow your business. So yeah, when some, when to, to, to sum it up, when someone comes with us with, with um, inaccurate salary expectations, we try to understand them a little bit more to understand what they're looking for and not just point them in the right direction, but give them a more realistic expectation. Um, and if you have time though, like the other thing is if you have time, to wait um, and find someone who is really passionate about what you do or um, is not interested in the money or they see the opportunity, they see the growth opportunity. Um, then if you have the time to wait for that, the average time to hire for us is 29 days. But if you have a little longer to wait and you can also vet people longer, then that's fine. You could potentially do that. Um, the other thing is, um, I would say is when, when they're hiring people to just, just start off part time, whether it's an apprenticeship style or they just want to give some more trial period, which I generally recommend for a lot of positions. You don't have to throw them in like, here's your team, here's your email, here's our, here's all of our slacks. Like you're now full on. If you just want to do a trial period, which I highly recommend, that's the other way where you can start with a slower um, pay uh, or, or lower rate, lower pay. <laughs> and then they can, they can prove it themselves, but that's, not a conversation. I, you, I mean, you must love talking about hiring because it just it can go in so many different directions to, as to what to do. And there's not always. I, I studied economics in school, and it's, it's, people always joke how it's there's it's uh, it's a soft science, but there's nothing like oh you could do this, you could do this. There's no. It's not like a, like a physical science where it's like here's the number of neutrons or whatever. Like you can't give a hard answer all the time. So it's exciting to explore different options, but with that can come some really great things, but it requires patience and, and understanding. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. I hope I didn't go off. Well, too that, much. that makes, that makes total sense. And I'm just any, any kind of rough idea about how many of the roles getting filled, get filled by sort of people in the, in the Western countries and how many get filled by people on outside Western countries. Like, any idea? Yeah, that's a good question. We could go back and look it up. I should get, I should get those numbers. We have um, records on hundreds of the jobs we filled. One thing that's different about uh, Zen and my jobs um, is we track every single job that comes through our site to, to get this kind of information. So when people approach us, we can actually give them accurate information on what we've seen this job 10 times before. And this is probably how things are going to play out. Um, we should look, look at that. Um, about seven, 70 to 90 percent of our audience um i can't say exact because it, it, it changes uh, but 70 90 percent um is based in north america um not not our companies are um our candidates um i would say more than 50 percent of our jobs being filled are in north america i would say most of them are in, are in the united states um why that is um i'm not exactly sure that's just what people want and i think um, things will change as people are moving back towards their, to their home countries, to like a lot of expats, digital nomads, they're, they're going back. Um, I'm one of the few, I think we're some of the few that are, are remaining and with the dynamite circle right now, we're, we're arranging meetups, um, to, like every week for, for people to just to connect and, and, and discuss what's going on in their businesses. And we're seeing less and less people in, in Asia, um, and in those, those normal, um, remote destinations. Um, so that might change, but in terms of fulfillment, it's mostly, um the united states after that it's you could just uh 
guests to the stereotypical places um, from uh, from Southeast Asia. Um, some of South America um, after that, um, just because there's a lot of good talent down here. Not necessarily, not necessarily um, like uh, um, people from uh, North America moving to South America. These are South Americans um, yeah. being hired. So. Did, did I answer that? <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. I, I, was, I mean, obviously, I've recruited all around the world. And, you know, I've, I mean, I've, I've had plenty of candidates and I've had some good experience myself, like, you know, recruiting people working at home, uh, just, yeah. you know, moms that have had amazing careers, but now want to spend a bit of time at home. And, you know, suddenly they, they have some hours and they have a ton of experience, right? So, so you can sometimes be very happy to find some great matches and at very affordable rates, right? So. There's, exactly. there's always lots of options. And that's going to change now because it, I don't want to say companies have the upper hand because I want companies to know that you still got to, you still got to have a good job description. Um, but um, yeah, it's people are, are going to be taking lower rates. People are going to, there's, there's going to be really good talent and the more really good talent in the U S accepting less, um, which people in our community have been predicting this trend for years and it's, it's happening. People want the remote. I, but the other thing that's going to throw off that, those numbers is um, so in March, when, when this hit, um, when everyone realized, you gotta go home. Um, or either you gotta work from home, or you're not gonna work at all, um, and with, with some exceptions. But um, we lost a lot of jobs. A lot of jobs were canceled, um, specifically within customer service, um, sales jobs, things that were all related to to, to customers. Really, um, those were we lost a lot of those jobs. A lot of them were canceled, um, and weren't receiving many new positions. That was in March. Now we're approaching. This is the this is the end of April right now. I'm looking at my calendar. Um, the last few weeks, it's uh, the, the 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 curve has 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 slipped. Um, everyone who companies are finally I wouldn't say they've adopted remote cultures. That's another conversation. But they have. They're now shifting from I'm hiring in New York. My, I'm hiring from my offices in, in Nashville, New York, and, and Boston. I'm now hiring anywhere um, because no one needs to go to the office. And so now we're seeing more jobs um, come in um, because companies that weren't usually remote are now remote. So again, more talent, more things being hired in the United States. Yeah, and I think, I mean, that's what I'm seeing as well, right? Like I think there'll be a ton of individuals coming out of this saying, you know, hey, wait a minute, you know, I've been doing the job that I could do from an office perfectly well at home. You know, why am I spending hours in traffic you know, buying expensive lunch, having to dress up every day and, you know, like all this waste uh, mm. when, when I could sit and do the same thing at home, right? So I, I'm sure there's a lot of individuals who will come out of this crisis looking for home-based jobs. And at the same time, you'll have the business owners on the other side sitting and saying, hey, you know, I thought it was impossible to get people to work from home, but actually, you know, we're getting great results after people working at home-based, right? And, you know, if we can cut, 10k 20k 30k a month in you know office rental that's a lot of potential um, savings right so I, I i think coming out of this the remote market will definitely grow significantly right so i i think i mean one of the reasons why i, I love doing the interview with you guys now because i think i think it's yeah you guys are definitely going to be more busy in the future is my prediction so we hope so. I just think the the one uh, the one thing that could stop that is uh, is remote work culture. Um, as a lot of people, WFA or WFA, WFH, yeah, work from home. That's now the the newest uh, acronym that's all over. Like work from home, work from home. And there's a big difference between work from home and work from anywhere in, in remote culture. And the only way this trend will um, will continue is if companies know how to adopt that. Because I don't know how long it's going to last. No one knows how long this is going to last. But and say next year at this time we're still we're shifting back in like well i'm right now in, in bogota uh, they're opening up the current lockdowns ending on may 11th uh, so just over two and just under two weeks from now but um they're not exactly sure how things are going to transition but they're making companies continue to work from home and the smart companies are going to learn how to adapt that remote culture um whereas others as soon as they go back to their office they're just going to go back to their office they're going to go back to the old days and that's that's fine for most for most companies i, I i'm not going to say I know what's better or what's worse. Um, but I'm saying for companies who want to continue this trend, they're going to have to figure out how to adopt remote culture. And that's beyond just having multiple meetings every, every day. People are still, they're taking attendance. Like they'll start a meeting. They'll have a, a we're having our first meeting at 930. We're going to, is everyone here? I'm going to count the, the Zoom boxes. 
And that's just like, that's, 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 that's not helpful for anyone. So I, I believe that in order for Dynamo Jobs and the rest of the remote work world to do well, um, these companies are going to have to adapt a remote culture um, and not be focused on just attendance, but focused on results. Um, and, and that's that's the kind of remote cu uh, culture that I'm hoping companies adapt to so this uh, trend uh, continues. Yeah, and I I would say, like, I've, I've had a lot of people reach out to me already because well, one of the things that happens when you go remote, if you have management problems, um, when you go remote, those management problems get blown up, right? So so I've definitely had a lot of people reach out to me, and I, I even did a specific course on remote management, right? Just because oh, really? so How's that going? Uh, well, it's, it's selling a lot, but but basically, and it wasn't it wasn't terribly complex, right? But I was basically doing a course just for people who are used to working in an office and now had to move people home, right? So it's basically just like some of the tools, some of the differences, like how to think about meetings, how to exactly the things you were saying, right? Um, mm -hmm. And and really just helping helping those people, you know, turn around because I think I think there is a lot of learning to be done. And that there's a lot of leaders that are definitely finding out that they're not necessarily up to par with their management game. But again, it's not necessarily that difficult to fix. And again, if you look at cost of office, cost of everything, right? There's, there's a fair amount of budget that you can actually invest into training your managers better and just getting much better results overall uh, compared to investing them in an office as an example, right? So. That's, That's uh, great. Yeah, very interesting. Right, Alex. What, uh, like the, the actual process of applying for a job, right? So you said as a company, we need, we need a job role, we need a job description. What, what else do you ask for when people are putting a job out on Dynamite Jobs? The, mo the thing that people forget most is the application process. <laughs> And that's why we added that the uh, the premium access where um, we'll get that set up for you because that was one of the most common things we were seeing within the dynamite circle was they send us a job and we'd say well, how would you like to gather candidates what do you want to know about them uh, we just have them email me just I don't I don't know just have them email me so that's why we immediately we we set up um, that that process to easily easily get that um, set up for everyone. Um, yeah, that's the last thing that, that people miss. Um, I think people have different ways of doing this. Um, and if you have a way to do it, that, that's fine. Um, I mean, I can tell what, what, what we recommend. And what we recommend is, is just is straightforward. Um, and that's, uh, 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 we have a, a standard application form um, uh, where we ask for name, location, email, uh, LinkedIn, uh, then plus um, uh, the cover letter, uh, resume, um, and then an optional video description. And that's where I encourage companies to to get engaged with that and to understand what they're what they're looking for because those are the very those are all very generic. They don't sound doesn't sound progressive. It doesn't sound remote. It's just those are the standard things because that's what different people look for. So we have that um, that that standard uh, uh, form set up. Um, so what I recommend for companies is when they're um, when they're setting up the application process is not to say, do I need LinkedIn or do I need a cover letter? Is just to know what you're looking for. Um, what is most important for you right now? And that goes back to, it's all, it's all related. <laughs> that goes back to job description. <laughs> what are the most important skills you're looking for? You know, I agree. I need someone who, uh, who's who been in the healthcare industry selling ad, uh, paid ads for, for, uh, for doctor's offices. Like I, I need that. Well then, I then necessarily like a, uh, a, 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 a a video, a video introduction, probably not as necessary. You just need to, you just need to see their resume and see like, boom, they've done this years or see their, uh, you see, see LinkedIn, know that they've spent five years in the industry and see who, who they've, who they've worked with. Um, and then you need a list of references. That's, that's probably what you need um, to, I mean, we're generalizing, simplifying this as much as possible. <laughs> now, if you need someone who, who is young, who, 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 who's energetic, um, who wants to grow within a company, then you might want to hire more for, uh, for, uh, for charisma and, and who, who's, who's in that point in their life, um, who's baselining somewhere, who understands like they want to be a part of this remote world or they're living in Saigon, um, they've been trying to get into this industry. And that's when you might want to ask a, ask for a cover letter saying why are they interested in this role? Kind of the general, go, go back to that, a, a video introduction. Um, what do you see in this company? Um, uh, I don't know those specific questions. That's another thing, but um, that's, that's what I recommend is to, when you're setting up the job description is, or the, the application process, look back at your job description and what are you hiring for? And then if you don't know, if you're still like, I don't know, 
go back and imagine who is your candid persona? Who is that ideal person? And how oh, I don't know. Well, how do you, how, what do you see the company being? And say you hire today, six from six months from now, where do you see, where do you see the company? Where do you, what do you see that person doing? And that can help. I think that kind of thought exercise um, will help the whole team um, basically realize like, well, I see us with, X amount of increased sales. Um, you're probably hiring for a specific set of skills then, not someone who is going to have to take a while to understand. Or I see someone, or at the other end of that, I see someone helping me develop these new projects and, and maybe form, uh, help, helping start a new, a new team with this project. And that's probably you're hiring for, um, uh, for, for a different type of role there. Uh, and the, the, the second type, more of someone who's hungry and wants to learn with you. So yeah, if that, <laughs> if that makes sense. That's, that that's makes how sense. I recommend looking at that. Makes sense, yeah. I mean, again, I'm always, I'm always trying to think of it from a sales perspective. So I'm always like, uh, I, actually one of my favorite companies that, that do amazing job descriptions, uh, well, two, uh, so base campus one and empire flippers is the other one. So I think they're, they're all, they're both very, very good at selling the company, as I said, without making it sound easy. Like you're not mm-hmm. trying to sell it as in, Oh, this is the easiest job in the world. Right. Because the, I mean, fundamentally, where most people go wrong with recruitment is that, from my experience, the best people are rarely unemployed. And when you look at many of the typical job boards, I find the the DC jobs to be very different based on the nature of it. But most typical job boards is full of people who are just sending out 400 resumes every day and they don't really care what they apply for, right? But I'm always very focused on, like, best people are typically already employed, right? Because great people are like great people don't just sit around for months and months unemployed, right? They, they find a way to make themselves productive. So, so looking at that aspect, right? Like coupling that with a, with a second piece that I always look at is the harder you make it to make the process of getting a job, the more people appreciate it. Right. And if you look at I mean, Google is probably my favorite example where they go out and I, I think you probably need to pass like seven interviews or something to be hired by Google, right? They have a rigorous process. And and even early on before they were famous, right? Like like they have a super rigorous process with, with regards to recruitment. And, and it, it's one of those things that if people go through all this hassle, if they're like, whoa, I got in. Like if they're, if they're so excited to get the foot in the door, it makes them so much less likely to actually leave again, right? Whereas if you get a job by, you know, like, oh yeah, I'm a business owner. You have a 15 minute chat and you're like, okay, you're hired, right? It's like, oh, well, you know, if I leave that job, I can, I can always find another one. That was easy, right? Um, so I'm, I'm always very keen on, you know, making the process, having multiple steps to the process and, and really trying to put layers in it, right? Because Again, first of all, people who aren't interested in that job, people who are just interested in a job, is less likely to sort of fulfill if you have some tests or like, as you said, doing a video and so on. If people are sending out 400 resumes a day, they're, they're not going to care to do a video, right? Uh, so, so having those steps, from my experience, makes, it really helps increase the value of, of the people coming through. So that's great. Excellent, Alex. Anything else you can think of that people should know about dynamite jobs before we finish off? Whew. Um, yeah, recently some of the candidates uh, have, uh, have started calling us the, uh, the most human remote job board, which we're very proud of. Um, I think that's just because of conversations like this is we're helping everyone that, that comes our way. This isn't just post it and forget it. You know, these are, we track every single position. Everyone who emails us from candidate to company um, gets a response and hopefully a helpful um, response. Um, so, I mean, that's the, that's why Dynamite Jobs exists is we want to help grow bootstrap teams. And that's not just from posting jobs, that's through, through engagement and helping, helping companies. Because if we help, if we help cam- candidates find a great position, we get referred. That's how we, that's how we grew for the first two years, just all organic referrals. Now with companies, it's, if we can help you hire well, um, you're going to keep growing. You're going to hire more with us. And that's, um, that's what we want. Yeah. I don't think anything else that's, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. If, if anyone wants hiring resources, we have a um, uh, the remote hiring guide that we just published, um, which has all of our, what we, what we go through. Uh, it it's, has job description templates, uh, job description examples, which is a big question. People always want to see, do you have job description examples? We got them all. We got <laughs> dozens on there. Um, we have uh, ed, uh, application process examples. Um, yeah, it's about a, almost a 30 page guide on that. So we're happy to, we send that to whoever uh, needs that. So we want to make it easy to hire. Um, we want to make sure you're ready to hire though. Excellent. Alex, thank you very, very much for your time today. And I hope the audience really benefits from this. Again, I'll include all the links under the webinar. So thank you everyone for, for watching.